Hi, I'm Jacinta. Hi, I'm Vanessa. And welcome to Strange Colony. We're a couple of shit-talking Aussie mums with a passion for true crime. And you are joining us for true crime story time today. <laughs> we still don't have an intro. You. It's a thing. It's a thing. Not sure if it's a great thing, but it's a thing. That. <laughs> Oh, how you been anyway? Uh, tired. 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 <sighs> late. So hard. <laughs> but for different reasons. Yeah. I'm I'm so ready for this baby to be out. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> um, obviously I've got my hair redid. I feel like a proper rainbow again. I love, I am living for it. He's a good hairdresser. He is like the most fabulous gay man. It's awesome. Love that. <sighs> well, all personal aside, we should probably dive into the case today. Uh, what do you a, have for us? For me, it's a serious one. Um, why. It's uh, the murder of Samantha O'Reilly. Mm. Samantha Jane O'Reilly. Um, yeah, I'm just going to dive straight in. I don't have a lot of information on it because there were only a few articles. It was very much a, uh, done, dusted, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of case, but it's an important one to me. So. Sounds like a lot of men. You know. Right. So, uh, this case is personal, as I said, and it will be told from my perspective as well as the articles. I am hoping to do it justice for Sam's sake. Uh, when I was 14, I'd heard on the news that a girl my age had been abducted along the Elephant Walk, which is a historical walking trail that uh, many of us in the local suburb used just when we, if we were bored, we'd go for walks. Um, I am familiar with this place. Yes. That's <laughs> when you walk to your friend's house without even thinking about it. Like from primary school age, you'd walk to your mate's place that was like 10 minutes away or something like that. Yeah. And uh, no one would bat an eyelid. It was just, you know, there was a reasonable amount of criminal activity locally, but if you minded your own business and kept to yourself, you could pretty much fine. We're in Adelaide's northern suburbs again, aren't we? We are. We're very much. We're <laughs> I grew up. Yeah. My, my, my original hometown. Ooh. Yes. In, in Blakeview specifically. Well, Blakeview, Smithfield, that kind of area. Yeah. Um, a few hours later, there was news that a body had been discovered. And I kept repeating in my head, Please just don't let it be anybody I know. Don't let it be anybody I know. Which I knew the odds were slim because it wasn't a big built up area. It was in the process of starting to become built up, but it wasn't built up at the time. So yeah. I knew pretty much everybody locally. Later on. The social butterfly. <laughs> not even. It was just by default. You just, you kind of knew all the kids in the area. Yeah. Uh, later on, uh, my cousin came over for a visit and I remember breaking down when he told me who it was and the state that she was found in. I cried uh. partially from recognition and also because I knew that you know, she must have suffered a fair bit and it was a sweet person, you know, somebody I actually genuinely liked. And I just, because of her temperament, I couldn't understand why someone would want to do that to her because of her temperament yes likely jumping back a little further in in, in my history i first met sam in primary school oh we both attended blakeview primary together she was as i said a very sweet very happy girl um my, by my memory, unfortunately, she was bullied quite frequently. Uh, I got along well with her. We weren't yeah. close. I would say we were friendly acquaintances. Uh, but okay. She and I both really loved the school library, so that's where we'd often 
I run across each other, either that or, you know, walking home from school, we'd run into each other, going to go across the lights and that sort of thing. Not the yeah. Lights, the time, it's just the crossing. Yeah. And um, yeah, she, she didn't always seem to know when people were being mean to her. Like she thought they were being her friends and just joking a lot of the time, which was kind of sad to see. But, you know, she saw the best in everybody. So she's just that kind of person. Yeah. And like I felt for her back then. And after everything went down, I admit I felt really guilty for not getting to know her better. And I've often wondered how her bullies felt. Good question. Can mm. we put it out there? Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to come forward and admit to being a bully, or one of her bullies, but there were a few that I knew of. I, yeah, I, I hope they feel guilty for the rest of their lives, quite frankly. I'm here for that. So, the uh, article side of it, because that's, that's my little backstory with her. It's not okay. much, but so Samantha Jane O'Reilly went for a walk on January 3rd, 2003 to the Manapara Shopping Centre. It was the last time she would be seen alive. On her way home, she would be picked up by a family friend, Kevin John Hender, age 49 at the time. And of course she went with him. Why wouldn't she? He was friends family with her. Friend. Yep. His sons went to school locally. He coached Auskick at our school. He was in charge of the local football league and held senior positions within the league. Like, everybody oh. knew him and trusted him. Yeah, like, big community men member. Mm -hmm. Very much that. So, yeah, like, I remember him from coaching us kick. <laughs> I miss those days. Oh, yeah. Innocence. Yeah. No responsibilities. That. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone knew him. Everyone trusted him. Uh, he would then proceed to take her back to his home where he attempted to rape her. <gasps> when he failed to accomplish this, he panicked. What if Sam told her parents about this or his wife or his sons? He'd lose everything. I have a really, really, really sick question. Sure. How did he fail to rape her? Did she fight him off or is he impotent? She fought him off to some degree, as far as I am aware. I mean, go her, I but know, also. The impotency, though, wasn't okay. actually explicitly stated. I'm just curious. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. No, but I get it. It's like. You're trying to piece together a situation, a scenario in your head. And yeah. I don't actually know the answer, but I dare say she was resistant at the very least. <laughs> Who wouldn't be? Yeah. So when he failed in this and he panicked, he ordered a very frightened Sam to lie on the ground, face down, and he strangled her with a rope. <gasps> apparently his intention was to render her unconscious hoping that when she came to she wouldn't remember what had happened oh bullshit mm. but instead she did die and he panicked again and decided to dump her body then dude he... sounds like amateur hour he, yeah he was like the whole thing was so fucking messy during the investigation into her murder, which was reasonably short and efficient, a local man that I became friends with only a couple of years later would actually be investigated as a potential suspect. Uh, apparently, the police had found um, a diary or a journal that of, of Sam's that uh, he was mentioned in. Like, this is hearsay. I'm, like, he actually told me this. Um, okay. We'll call him Mac. So Mac was about four or five years older than um, Sam and just entering adulthood himself when the investigation yeah. was happening. And I remember him telling me that he was 
terrified at the time because he had no idea what he could do to prove that it wasn't him. And actually it made me question for the first time how you would feel if suspicion fell on you and you were innocent. Yeah. That's, yeah, terrifying. As I say, he was coming into, I think he was 19 or 20 when he was a suspect. Absolutely flabbergasting, mm. really, yep. to have that thrown on you. And we're all ill-equipped to deal with that, yes. especially at that age. Yes, absolutely. I cannot find a start date for this trial. Okay. There's no Wikipedia page. Uh, he has a Murderpedia page. Oh, joy. Like him, obviously. I mean, Kevin Hinder. Um, there's some old, very short news articles and minimal discussion on, like, a couple of forums. That's all I had to work with here. Hence, Oof. hence why I've uh, given a bit of the backstory from my perspective. <laughs> Not making it about me. I'm literally filling in a bit of time. And um, I think it's important to get to know who she was as well, as best as possible. I'm not the best person for that job, but, you know, I'm what we've got to work with. You try. I try. During the trial, though, Hender's lawyer asked for the biggest discount on the parole period because he's ple- he pleaded guilty. <laughs> the audacity. He said that Clearly what happened is that there was an act of a sexual nature and as a direct result, he strangled Samantha with a ligature. An act of a sexual nature. Like, he can't even admit to what he did. Like, oh, this is the lawyer saying it. Oh, my God. Yeah, the lawyer described the attempted rape that way disgusting oh i can't believe i used to want to be a lawyer who defended criminals it was probably the challenge of it wasn't it the challenge of it i love sitting in a courthouse and like seeing all of that happen yeah i do like the legal process let me put it that way there's something interesting about it <laughs> <laughs> The lawyer also said that Hender was depressed about missing out on a job and the death of a family member. Because that's adequate reasoning. Yeah. I don't know if his lawyer was just as incompetent at his job as Kevin was at plotting a murder. Like... Yeah, it gets better. So when he was actually originally interviewed by the police, Hender told them that Samantha had pestered him to have sex with her and he only had sex with her so she wouldn't disclose it to his family. What? (laughs) Yep. But medical evidence showed that she was still a virgin at the time of her death. Oh, man. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, can we go a third excuse? Because it looks like he's just, like, grasping at straws here at this point. Any excuse to get me off the hook. Pretty much. Like, this is just obviously a man who has no sense of fucking accountability whatsoever. Like, a pathetic excuse for a man. Yeah. The judge, when sentencing him, commented that it was ironic that he'd killed her to keep his family from falling apart since pretty well all of his family completely turned their backs on him as a result of this. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. So on June 25th in 2004, Kevin Hender was found guilty of murder. He was sentenced to life in prison with a non-parole period of 23 years. Justice Anderson, who was responsible for the case, said the confession was made only after the police had conducted a DNA test and because the game was up. A 15-year-old girl has had her life cut short by an act in which she did not provoke in any way a girl who was vulnerable and unable to defend herself. So I, I'm actually really pleased with that result. Same. 23 years is decent for non-parole. 23 years is bloody epic for a non-parole period. Like, 
normally you're looking at like somewhere between seven and 15. Yeah. Although I've done some research on other cases where I'm just really disappointed with the judicial outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Dante Arthur's one was. Yeah. Bleh. Um, <sighs> Kevin Hender will be up for parole in 2026. That's not far away. Yeah. I can hardly believe that it's been 19 years since it happened. Like, I remember that day. Yeah. And I don't I... think you'll ever forget it. No. You'll be old and decrepit, like, falling into Alzheimer's and still remember it. Probably. Um, I, I wonder what... <sighs> I wonder what her life would be like if she would still here, you know? Oh, of course. Because she's your age. You say that like there's so much difference in our ages. Well, yeah, but she was a year, year above me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's close oh. to my age, but she's not exactly my age. But, like, it just, yeah. Yeah. It's that whole, that's someone I, that's someone I grew up around and she didn't even get a chance to start her life no i like i think you know would she have kids by now like would she, would she career, have or? achieved yeah career wise is what i was thinking and would i still have known her because like you have a tendency when i go back into that area i have a tendency to run into people i know all the time from from primary school, high school, and that sort of thing. So, were we still bumped into each other? More than likely. Most people from that area don't really leave that area. Not often, no. Or don't go too so, far. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of uh, food for thought, that one for me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still angry at him he was so freaking stupid about it i mean i'm glad he was stupid about it because it made made it easy to catch him and, and pin it on him but if you haven't been plotting this or it's not obviously not premeditated why why bother her at all what possessed him to go this oh I think this is a good idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and molest this family friend of mine. Why? Potentially something that he had thought about for a long time and not necessarily just in regards to her, it was just opportunistic at the time. <sighs> Why even do it though if you're so, if you're that afraid of losing your family and them turning their back on you that you're gonna literally kill an innocent girl? Why would you, why would you risk it in the first place? That I don't know, unless he thought he genuinely could get away with it. What know. bothers me is that he was such an involved community member. Mm. Yeah. And I struggle to believe that it was the first time he tried. Didn't really think about it like that. Given that a lot of the things he's involved in community-wise was okay. children's activities. Yeah. I mean, at the time, I felt so freaking bad for his family as well. Oh, even now? Yeah. He had three sons. Oof. Who were... I think there was one that was younger than us, and I think the other two were older, but not by much. Yeah. I didn't know them personally. I mean, obviously, you can see why I couldn't do this one as a palate cleanser. It's certainly not cleansing to anyone's palate. No. But at the same time, I, I don't have enough time to fill out what would normally be a full episode either. We're a mini app this week. We're a mini app this week. Might be small, but I don't know. For me, for me, this is definitely most harrowing but that's you know literally just proximity i believe 
Yeah, I've never even heard of her. So I appreciate you giving voice to a victim. Mm. I mean, it was partially a voice to her and also I will admit it was a chance for me to bleed the pain out of a memory. Fair. I mean, you know, we talk about murderers and murders and rapists all the time and this is the closest to a murder I've ever been in. As I was talking to my mum about doing this episode last night and I said, you know, said exactly that. She goes, it's as close as you ever want to get to a murder. I said, I'd say it's far closer than I ever wanted to be to a murder. I, I find the subject matter fascinating from a... Uh, a safe distance. A very safe, detached viewpoint. Um, yeah. Where I can compartmentalise what has happened away from how I feel about it. And I saw a... Um, do you follow D'Angelo Wallace on YouTube? No. no I, he's a commentary YouTuber and I quite, I quite like his takes on things. And uh, one of the things that he's actually said is that true crime podcasts and the like are exploitative. Which, I mean, of course, I kind of went, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> I feel attacked. I do feel but, attacked. But I see the relevance. It is a valid point. It is a valid point. Um, the way that we quite casually oftentimes talk about murders and horrific things that have actually happened to real people. I can't speak for every true crime podcast. I know that you and I do it as a coping mechanism to handle the content of what we're discussing without getting too bogged down emotionally. But this one's a bit harder for me to do that with. Yeah. So. Absolutely. There's a reason why I tend to lean towards reaching back through history as opposed to going current because it's easier to detach yourself from it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's just, it keeps it at a distance. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely get that. But, um, yeah. We do laugh and joke a lot, but that is just us. Defense mechanism. Yes. Because... If you look too carefully. You'll cop us crying like we did in Snowtown. Yeah. I'm like this close to, I've been this and close to. And in Dante distance. Arthur's, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, I'm just doing the whole compose, compose thing. Um, <laughs> no, but like, I, I genuinely liked it. Yeah. And, uh, he sucks. <laughs> fucking sucks. Sucks. I shouldn't Don't have you make me start. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything about that. But yeah. <sighs> I want to say that there's a special place in hell for people like that, but I honestly don't believe that. That's no, just me so. trying to me personally, if our penal system ever wants to hire a torturer for pedophiles, I'm here. Just saying. Throwing it out there. You do a good job. You would do a great I job. I would. I am way too squeamish for that ish. <laughs> Sadistic me would very much love that. <laughs> no. No. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> <Ugh. laughs> I can't do it, sir. <laughs> It's funny because I can look at your basic crime scene photos, but I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all we have time for today. Well, no, we have plenty of time. That's all I have for you today, unfortunately. Yeah. As I said, it was a very open and shut case. Um, it's barely even a footnote on the internet but it's going to leave a lasting mark for me for the rest of my life. So I uh, thank you for allowing me to use this as a, as a bit of a therapy moment for, for, for a minute. Um, if you are interested in following us on our socials, you can find us on Instagram at Strange Colony 2.0. You can find us over at Twitter at Strange Colony, and you can contact us via email at strangecolony at gmail.com. 
And uh, if you're uh, listening to us, please leave us a review, give us some feedback. And if you are watching on YouTube, feel free to like and subscribe. Although <laughs> this is not the perkiest episode of the lot. So um, on that note, stay safe, stay sane. I love you. Bye-bye. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.